Okay, I'm back for one more video for the weekend. Um, so on the top of the, we're now at the top of page three of the notes. We'll go through examples five, six, and seven. We'll um, graph these. We'll um, talk about their domains, and we'll talk about wh uh, where they might be discontinuous, kind of explain why that is, and all that fun stuff. And then um, we'll have a Google form to answer uh, regarding all that stuff. So let's get through it. So here we got one over x and two over x. What you may want to do is you may try pausing the video and try graphing on your own, or maybe go to Desmos and pause the video. That sometimes is a good idea. Uh, so go ahead and um, do that. And I'm going to do it right now, and we'll see, we'll see if we get the same thing. Okay, sorry, I was just finding my stylus here. I had misplaced it, so <laughs> sorry for a long pause. You're like, was Mr. Ree okay? I'm good, don't worry. Um, so one over x less than zero, so it's gonna look like this. And two x, x is included. So, uh, sorry, yes, um, zero is included. And it's two x, so a pretty steep slope like that. What's the domain? Well, it's all real numbers, of course, because we see there that nothing is excluded. Now, where my, uh, what type of um, discontinuity or identify any point of discontinuity in this type, why is it discontinuous? Definitely I would say it's not continuous at x equals zero, because uh, obviously it's not connected. And I would call this an infinite discontinuity because um, f of c did exist, so we're okay there. So usually when FC does not exist, that's typically going to be for, um, well, it could be any kind of discontinuity, really. Uh, but FC did exist. But the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x did not exist because my left-hand limit was negative infinity, while my right-hand limit was zero. Whenever you have anything that's infinite in nature, that's automatically a vertical asymptote, which we call an infinite discontinuity. So that's the reason why. And is this a continuous function? Well, no. Because uh, on in its domain, we were discontinuous at x equals zero, because x, x equals zero was, zero was part of our domain. Um, so naturally, functions are going to be continuous um, in, its, in, their, in, their, in, in their domains. But when you have piecewise functions, you know, because, you know, piecewise functions are kind of a free-for-all, uh, you're going to run into those kind of um, weird situations like we just did right here. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. Go ahead and try graphing that. So let's see here. Two and x is less than one. Not not inclusive. X equals one at one, so you have a dot right there. And negative x plus three when x is greater than one. So by plugging one, it's going to be two, but a slope of negative one, so it looks like that. And again, it's not inclusive. And of course, you'd be crossing the x axis at three. Domain's all real numbers again. There are no x y's are excluded. Now, in this case, we have what we call a, well, at x equals 1, we have discontinuity, and we call that a removable discontinuity. So, again, f of c existed, and the limit exists also. And we'll say f of uh, 1, because that's what x equals c. But when this specific thing happens, when condition three fails, when one and two work, that's a removable discontinuity. But um, f1 did not equal the limit as x approach one of f of x. And that was a problem, or g of x, whatever, sorry. 
I know it's arbitrary what we call these functions. And so is it a continuous function? No, of course not. Um, and again, it's, it, and it's still maybe a discontinuity. In this case, at x equals 1. It was discontinuous. Then for d, what should we assign to g of 1 to make it continuous? Well, obviously, I need to plug in the hole. So that's what we should have done. We should have made g of 1 equal to 2 so that we make it a continuous function. Lastly, example 7. Don't end the video here. Um, let's sketch this graph. So you're probably going to want to use Desmos for this one. Um, but you could get a little creative. Um, this can be rewritten like this. Because if you were to FOIL root x minus 1 through x plus 1, you do get x minus 1. These cancel. So you get root x plus 1, which I know is a square root function with a vertical shift of 1. However, 1 is undefined because obviously you can't divide by 0. So it's actually going to be a hole in this case. And it looks like that. There you go. So identify a type of this content x equals 1. We call that, again, removable. Keep in mind that uh, for jump, um, jump is when you have this. Uh, jump is not this. That's removable. That right there is jump. And jump is when the limit does not exist. But we haven't seen jump on this page. Uh, we will see jump uh, a little later, I think. Um, and then here you have to give a form for the extended function so you can make that continuous. So if you want to make that continuous, you want to force it to be continuous, you do a piecewise function. You do what we had originally. And you say this is true when x does not equal 1. And x equals 1, you just make it 2. So that way you can plug the hole. Um, and that would um, be good for us there. So that's how you could write that um, as an extended function. So the way you still maintain the original nature of the function, but again, you plug in the hole. Um, and uh, again, this is technically continuous on its domain because zero or sorry one was not part of the domain but if we want to make it continuous at x equals one if we want to really focus at that um, and have that part of our domain then we need to say f uh, the um, f of x equals two in that case okay that ends uh, page three of the video